.NET 7 is releasing this week. With a new version of .NET comes a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what is in .NET 7, and I'm going to go over the support lifecycle of this version. We'll wrap up by talking about how to get more information on this release. Now, before we get started, there are three things you need to know. First, if you want to improve your C-sharp skills, you should subscribe to this channel. With over 450 C-sharp videos and counting, this is the place to learn C-sharp, and especially the upcoming .NET 7. Second, if you want free C-sharp resources, go to imtimcorey.com and click on the resources tab. They're going to find my podcast, the C-sharp projects page, and a lot more. Third, if you need a deep education, in a C-sharp topic, I have dozens of courses to help you out. Not only will you begin a world-class education, but you'll also be helping fund my free content so that everyone can have a great education in C-sharp, not just those who can afford it. Now, this video is a little bit different. This is an overview video, and it's one that I usually would dive into code, but there's so much to cover. We're actually not going to dive into code in this video. We're going to talk through kind of an overview, and then I'm going to have a lot of videos coming out to go over specifics that we're going to cover uh, the general generalities of today. So let's start with an overview. Um, these are the questions you are going to get asked and we're going to address in this video. What are some of the interesting changes in .NET 7 and C Sharp? I'm sorry, .NET 7 and C Sharp 11. There we go. And how long will .NET 7 be supported? Is .NET 6 still supported? And should I move to .NET 7? And finally, where can I get more information? So this is the, the overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, these five questions we're going to address. So the first one, the big one is, what are some of those interesting changes in .NET 7 and C Sharp 11? Well, I've pulled out just a few of the ones that I think are pretty important. And in fact, most of these are going to have videos specifically dedicated to them on this channel. So let's go with first some regular expression improvements. So some things did make regular expressions a little better in .NET 7. Um, and by the way, all this stuff is in addition to just general speed improvements. .NET 7 is faster than .NET 6, which is faster than .NET 5, which is faster than .NET Core 3.1. So it's always getting better, but with that, we have some new features like regular expression improvements. We have some sim simplified link ordering. Um, little thing, but at the same time, it um, is a nice feature improvement. We have improvements in reflection. We're going to do a whole video on this, on how it's made reflection better in .NET 7. App trimming. If you're not familiar, what you can do when you build your application, say I want to have a self-contained application, is you can trim out all the stuff you don't need, all the parts of .NET that aren't relevant to your specific application. And that makes for a smaller application, a smaller exe file. And there's some improvements to app trimming, specifically in trimming libraries, so that the library you, you depend on, that class library, you can also trim based upon which exe is using that DLL. There's some improvements with date time, where we have the ability to get uh, microsecond and nanosecond uh, values in dot or in date time, as well as a few others. So that allows for more specific timing values coming out of the date time object. Memory caching improvements. So this is specifically in um, in the ASP.NET Core section, but this is improvements in how we do memory caching. This was kind of fun. We can already create zip files inside of .NET, but now we can create tar files. So if you need a tar file for your, your Linux distribution or whatever uh, reason you want a tar file, we can now very, very easily create a tar file. We're gonna do a 10-minute training on this where it's it's super simple. It's a couple of lines of code, and there you go. You got, you've taken your files and, and compressed them into one tar file. This right here, this line right here, takes up a lot of improvements. Blazor changes, yes, there's a ton of Blazor changes. Blazor has been kind of the the more um, the area of more focus, and that's not because uh, MVC and Razor Pages aren't being updated. They definitely are. It's just that they are more feature complete, 
versus Blazor, which is still getting lots of new stuff. So there's uh, blank templates where we have a, just a 10 minute training video on that, where we now have the ability to create a Blazor template or use a Blazor template that does not have the sample data started in it. We also have improvements to navigation. There's a, a loading progress bar in Blazor WebAssembly. There's um, bind after in Blazor. There's virtualization improvements. So you can um, put more things on the screen faster and, and see a more responsive website. We use that in the suggestion site, suggestions.imtimcore.com. We use virtualization so that even though the list is at this point, I think 300 long, we only load about 30 or so suggestions on the screen. And yet it the scroll acts as if we can scroll through all 300. And as you scroll, it loads more in the background. That makes for a much more efficient loading mechanism. So some improvements to um, the virtualization. Passing state is another thing. Uh, custom elements improvements. There's lots of cool stuff in Blazor. We'll cover a lot of those things in, in videos, whether it be 10 minute training or the full, uh, full videos. Minimal APIs and API in general improvements. There's some really cool stuff in here. There's output, output caching middleware. There's rate limiting. There is ability to upload files in a minimal API and so much more. I do have some videos already on minimal APIs on this channel. They kind of go over what they are, what the difference is between a minimal API and a full API. And really when you choose each, but we'll go over some of these additional improvements, um, improvements to open API in minimal APIs, um, route filter handling, improved dependency injection, uh, whole bunch of cool stuff. There's also some stuff in ASP.NET Core in general, uh, such as nullable models for MVC and Razor pages. There's some other stuff we'll pull in as well. There's a lot of changes, especially in the API space when it comes to .NET 7. And really, there's lots more. I boil it down to the things that I thought would be kind of most, most relevant for just dive right in for most people. Okay, things that almost everybody can probably take advantage of right away in their code. There's a lot of stuff that is, I don't wanna say edge case because that's not the case, but it's more things for very specific circumstances. There's a lot of more, lot more stuff in there. Um, and even just more stuff I haven't been able to talk about. So check out all the changes in .NET 7. There's some really great stuff in there, even though the, the .NET 7 improvements are really the lesser, okay? So there's, there's a greater set of changes in the long-term support. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, like with .NET 6, there's a lot of changes. With .NET 7, there's lesser changes, but there's still some, some significant changes. Um, we didn't even talk about .NET MAUI changes, but there's some in there as well. So that's the .NET 7 is kind of like the the lesser of the two versions of .NET when it comes to updates. And yet there's tons and tons of value in here that you're definitely not going to want to miss. So let's talk about the support window because the question always comes up. Okay, great. I want to learn the latest and greatest stuff. Excellent. I'll learn .NET 7. But when it comes to using it in business, should I even bother? Should I, should I deal with .NET 7 or wait and skip it? And so let's talk about this because there's some, there's some confusion that comes out when it comes to the two different types of uh, versions of .NET. So .NET 7 is what's now called a standard term support or STS version. That means it's supported for 18 months. So this, um, this is a shorter term, let's call it short term, but the actual wording is standard term. This is a, a shorter term support. Now, does that mean it's not supported? No, it means it's fully supported, fully production ready. Yes, you can use it in production. Yes, you can use it in a real application. Yes, it's fully supported by Microsoft. It's just that the support window is 18 months. It's the shorter version. And Microsoft has a concept of a long-term support. And that's .NET 6 currently still. That's a long-term support. A long-term support version of .NET 
is supported for a total of three years, which means at this point, because this was released, .NET 6 was released in November of 2021. .NET 6, as of the time of recording, still has two years of support left. And if you notice the pattern here, even though there's only two of them on the screen, there is a an LTS every two years, and there's an STS every two years. So .NET 6 is the LTS, which means .NET 8 will also be the LTS. And the idea there is if you want to take the slower upgrade route, meaning you don't upgrade as often, then you would upgrade on the LTS versions. So you'd upgrade at .NET 6. You'd be waiting right now until .NET 8 came out. And then you'd start the up to a year process of moving to .NET 8 while still under Microsoft support. Now, you do not have to use uh, .NET 8 or .NET 6, I'm sorry, only through you know the three years. You could use it beyond that if you wanted to, it just goes out of support from Microsoft. So the recommendation is to stay within a supported version, which at any one time you'll have two, potentially three that are supported. So right now we have two. We have .NET 6 and .NET 7. .NET 5 is no longer supported by Microsoft. You can still use it, but it's not supported. Okay, there's a difference there. So it still works, but with .NET 7, the question is, should you upgrade to it? And my answer is, it depends. I mean, that's that's the answer for every question, right? But it does depend on what your organizational uh, values are and how big your application is and um, you know how long it's going to take to upgrade to .NET 7. I will tell you that the upgrade process is not difficult to go from .NET 6 to .NET 7, but just because it's not difficult doesn't mean there's not a lot of testing that has to be done, validation and verification in order for you to move to that version. The same thing is true for all of your dependencies. This is why the more dependencies you have, the the worse off your application is going to be because that means you have to have all your dependencies ready to move to the next version before you move to the next version. And that's kind of a, a cascading problem that can be difficult to manage. So the less dependencies you have, the better usually when it comes to how rapidly you can move to the new version. But it's up to you if you want to stick with .NET 6 or if you want to move to .NET 7, but both are fully supported production ready versions. Okay, the next LTS is set for .NET 8 in November of 2023. If you notice the pattern here, every November, during the .NET Conf, the new version of .NET will be released. So we can predict out into the future, when's .NET 10 coming out? November of 2025. So we know what the pattern is going to be, at least until Microsoft decides to change. But for now, that's the pattern they are um, sticking to and, and focusing on for the future. So just to be very, very clear, both the LTS and STS are fully supported production ready versions. I know I keep saying this, but this is a question people have is, is .NET 7 production ready? And absolutely it is. You can absolutely use it production. Is it supported? Absolutely. It's just how long. It's three years versus 18 months. That's the only difference as far as uh, support. That's it. Okay. So where can you get more information? Because we talk about theory a lot today. We want to dive into the code and see the changes and all that cool stuff. Well, if you want to start at the beginning, the .NET blog has been blogging about all the changes through all the preview versions of .NET and kind of giving some code samples and stuff like that. I went through, I think about uh, seven, seven preview versions plus two release candidate versions of .NET in the blog to see the differences, compare them, watch the changes happen and pull out the things I thought were relevant. That's where I get my information from. And then I go test it and, and try it out in .NET, in Visual Studio. So if you want to go there, you can. There's some great references. The .NET Conf is a place where you can get more information as well. That's the, the conference from Microsoft that's every year to launch .NET. And it goes over all the cool new things. It has some cool demos. 
you can see more information there. Also, this channel, this is the place to find more information about .NET 7 because I have a lot of videos coming out that will demonstrate the different parts of uh, what you we've talked about today, demonstrate how to use them, when to use them, why to use them, and so on. So I'll, I'll put the most important things I think and and put those on the channel and hopefully get you all the information you need to move to .NET 7 when you're ready and start using all the cool new stuff. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of the .NET 7 launch and what's going on. There's definitely more to follow. So definitely if you aren't already subscribed to this channel and stick with us. Thanks for watching. If you have any you know things you thought I missed in this, leave them down in the comments. Maybe I'll create a video for those as well. As always, I am Tim Corey.